So last lesson, we talked about how to factor trinomials using algebra tiles and um, the guess and check method. Today, we'll go over how to factor trinomials using grouping. So factor by grouping. We call it decomposition as well. Sometimes polynomials with four terms can be factored by removing the greatest common factor from a pair of terms followed by a binomial common factor. So let's take a look at example four. Factor by grouping, and we have one, two, three, and four terms here. So we're going to create two brackets that contain the first two terms and the two last terms. We're looking for GCF from the first bracket and the second separately. The first bracket, we could take out common term x. So take the x out. So x squared divided by x is just x plus 3x divided by x is 3. Close bracket. Or bring down the operation. And then we're going to take out another common factor. So I notice that they're both divisible by 6. So I'm going to take the 6 out. So uh, first term, so 6x divided by 6 would be x. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. And what we also need to know is that this binomial is equal to this binomial. So this means we could take the x plus 3 out from the equation. So this whole thing, first term divided by x plus 3 is x. And the second term here divided by x plus 3 is 6. So check this out. We have x, 6 here. And we have a common factor x plus 3. Let's try method number 2 to prove that this is correct. So we can just rewrite the expression first here. And then we're going to simplify by combining the like terms. I see that there's x and x here. So if you have a common variable with the same exponent, then we can just add or combine the coefficients. So we can write down x squared plus 9x plus 18. So using the method we learned yesterday, guess and check method, I know that there's a hidden 1 in front of x squared. So I'm just going to say the factor of 1 is 1 and 1. And then we need to look at the factor of 18. But let's try just go straight into uh, the options. So 3 and 6. All right, so this uh, um, the product is positive. These numbers are both negative or both positive. But notice that this middle term is positive. So I know that the factor of 18 must be both positive. All right, so let's cross multiply and add. So we have 1 times 6 is 6, plus 1 times 3 is 3. So we have 9, which is equal to the middle term over here. So next step we need to take is to draw a bracket for the first row and the second row. And rewrite the expression. So this equals x plus 3 times x plus 6. And they are equal. So we have confirmed that x plus 3 times x plus 6 is the factor form of the original expression. Moving on to example 5. Factor by grouping. 
All right, so last class I talked about how um, the simple case where ax squared plus bx plus c form is what we're supposed to go over mostly, where a equals 1. Simple case like that. But we don't have 1 here. The coefficient in front of x squared is no longer 1. So we'll use this example to explain what happens if a isn't equal to 1. So we're going to first group the first two and the last two terms together. And we're going to factor out a common term. I see x here and x here. It looks like I can take out 1x. So I'll write x outside of the bracket first. And then I also see this coefficient 2 and 8. So I can take out 2 as well. So, so far we have 2x out. Alright, so I don't see any common term anymore, so I can just divide 8x squared divided by 2x. So we're left with 4x from the first term, and then 2x divided by 2x has to be 1. And we carry over the sign. Bring down the operation, and we'll do the same thing for the second bracket. I see 3 and 12. So I can take out 3. 12x divided by 3 is 4x, and then minus 1 left behind. Same thing here. I see a common factor from this expression. So I'm going to take that 4x minus 1 out from the expression. So if you divide the first term, this whole thing, by 4x minus 1, then you're left with 2x. The same thing for the second term here. The whole thing divided by 4x minus 1, you get 3. So plus 3 left. We factored the expression by grouping. We'll double check by using our guess and check method. When we're collecting the like terms, this simplifies to 8x squared plus 10x minus 3. So guess and check method always requires you to find the factors of two numbers like this. So I'm going to choose 4 and 2 because I know 2 times 4 is 8. 3 here is a prime number, so it has to be 3 and 1. We're going to double check where this negative sign will be, either on negative 3 or negative 1. So let's double check. First, I'd like to put that negative in front of 3. We're going to try cross multiplying and we'll check what we get. We have 4 times 1 is 4 plus negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6 which equals to negative 2. So this doesn't equal to the middle term here. This must be equal, but it's not. So that's a no. How about I use negative 1 here? Let's try again. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, plus 3 times 2 is 6. This equals to 2. And again, this doesn't equal to 10. In the middle term. So this doesn't work. How about we swap it? So we have 1 and 3. And let's try negative on 3 and a positive 1. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 plus 2 equals negative 10. Okay, so this is pretty close. We're just off by a sign. So this indicates we're really close to our answer. So how about we switch our sign to negative 1. So we have 4 times 3 is 12, plus negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, which equals to 10. We found the factor here. So we'll draw a 
bracket around the first row and then the second row. So factored form of that expression is 4x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. Now let's look at example 6. Factor 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. Although I didn't mention it, I want you guys to learn how to do this by grouping method. Unlike previous examples, we only have three terms. This is a trinomial. Previously, I gave you four terms, so we can just group them together to start factoring. But this time, we need to split up the middle term into two. So I'm going to choose 5x and 2x. We're going to add them together to get 7x. And I have 5x squared as a first term, so I'm just going to put that by the side here and bring down the 2. And the reason why I chose 5 and 2 is because I saw these terms. It's all about recognizing what we can take out. I can just take out 5, and also I can take out an x from the first one. So let me just rewrite this one here. So don't forget the bracket. When you're grouping, it's quite important. And then we have leftover x plus 1 inside the bracket. And then we bring down the operation here, and we'll take out 2. And we're left with x plus 1. I see a common factor here, binomial factor right here. So let's take those out. x plus 1 times left over 5x plus 2. Grouping method might be tricky in a way that you need to know exactly how to split up that middle term. So when does this method fail? This happens when your splitted terms are not suitable for factoring. So for example, we had 5x squared plus, let's say, 3x plus 4x plus 2. So I know 3x plus 4x equals 7x, but if you were to group it this way, we don't get a common factor. So from the first bracket, we know that there's x here, but nothing else I can take out. There's no coefficient that I can take out. So we can just say x outside, and we have 5x plus 3 left over in the bracket. The second term, I see 2's here, and 4 is divisible by 2, so I'm going to take out the 2. So we're left with 2x plus 1. Normally, we see a common factor here, but they're not equal. This is when grouping method fails. So this happens when no common factor is shown. Moving on to next page, example 7. Factor the expression to find the dimensions. Right, so we are given a rectangle, and they're telling us that area equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. So keep in mind that area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. Now I'll say length times width. We're going to find the factors of this expression. So let's stay away from grouping for a bit and just stick to guess and check method. We have 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. So notice that our coefficient in front of x squared is no longer 1. This means we need to find factors of 2. And 2 is a prime number, so we can only divide 2 by 1 in itself. Let's take a look at 9. And don't worry about the sign just yet. I just want to find the magnitude. So I see 9 is 3 times 3 or 1 times 9. 
I don't think 1 times 9 would be a nice factor to start with, so I'm just going to do 3 times 3. Let's try putting the negative here. Cross multiply and add. So we have 2 times 3 is 6 plus negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So we're left with positive 3. Okay, that's good. So we have this equal to the middle coefficient here. This indicates we have a correct factors. So now we're going to put the brackets around the first row and then the second row and then rewrite it. We know the factored form of that expression would be 2x minus 3 times x plus 3. So the question asks you to find the dimensions. So you do have to label them. For example, L length equals to 2x minus 3 and the width equals 2x plus 3. Or you can just reverse the factor and say width is 2x minus 3 and the length is x plus 3. Moving on to example 8. Find up to three integers that can be used to replace k so that the trinomial can be factored. We're looking for up to three integer k's. First thing we need to look at is the coefficient in front of x squared. Thankfully, it's just 1. So that's one less thing to worry about. 1 times 1 equals 1. Next thing would be to find the factors of k. Well, k is a variable, so we can't just pick values and say those are the factors. But if we set up the condition of k, then maybe this is solvable. Let's say that k equal to, because we need k, the third term to be a product of two numbers, because we need to put factors here, right? So I'm just going to say k equals a times b, where a and b is some integer value. So a and b are integers. Okay, so if that's the case, I will just put a over here and b over here, because we just let k be product of a and b. Next step would be cross, multiply, and add. 1 times a is a, plus 1 times b is b. And we know that this number, whatever this is, has to equal to 4. Because we have 4 as a middle term over here. And it has to add up to that number. All right, so let's take a look at some combination that gives us 4. So let's see. Mm, I can do... 2 plus 2 equals 4. And then perhaps I can do 1 plus 3 equals 4. And then maybe we can put a negative value like negative 2 plus 6 is also 4. These are possible 8 terms. And the second term is b. So we can state that k equals because k equals a times b, we can say 2 times 2, which is 4. So k equals 4. For the second case, k equals 1 times 3, which equals 3. And lastly, k equals negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12. So we have found three integers that can be used to replace k so that the trinomials can be factored. So this is it for 5.3 part 2.